Uh, with more private companies and countries getting into launching satellites, um, how big is the threat of space junk, problem space junk? I, I can tell you that that is probably the hottest topic uh, in, the international, in the international space community at this moment. Um, in particular at the United Nations, every single year, uh, all of the countries, those that, are, uh, those that are capable of launching all the way to those that are um, simply buying the services, are worried about how do we continue to keep, uh, keep that environment usable? Um, because it's, it's unfortunately an issue that, that grows at, a, at an exponential rate, right? You get two satellites that run into each other and then that creates more space junk that then runs into, uh, that uh, disables other further satellites. It is a, it's a massive issue. It's, there's, a, there's a tragedy of commons uh, type of, of thing going on here, which is when you pollute in your own backyard and you're trying to fly space systems in, in that environment where it's uh, congested. And there's tens of thousands of pe pieces of debris, uh, you know, sort of my fist size or larger that are, that are floating around in low Earth orbit up there that uh, the US Space Command is they're tracking. Uh, it, it creates a real threat to some very expensive assets that are flying uh, around in space. And, and the issue really came to a head a couple of years ago when a Russian satellite uh, collided, as Arian said, with a communication satellite, Iridium communication satellite, and then the Chinese uh, intentionally shot down one of their satellites. And when they did that, they did it in an orbit where it, it, it increased the population by almost 40% in terms of the debris, which was really kind of boneheaded on their part. Um, and in fact, later on, about a year, year and a half later, uh, the U.S. kind of showed how you did it. They waited for one of their satellites to come down and they shot it from a, from a Navy ship and they took it out and within two weeks that debris had actually come down and burned up. But the issue of how you, how you go about trying to not only track it, understand if you're going to hit it or not, which is one piece, and then trying to clean it up, which is even harder. And there's a lot of, been a lot of things that NASA and other agencies have worked on, but that's one of the really key problems as more commercial actors as well as human beings are in, or in low Earth orbit. One step further uh, to that is for future launching, how do, we, how do we create rules of the road? And um, unfortunately, probably not a treaty for a long time because it takes a very long time on the, international, um, on the international level, but how do we create some sort of soft law, if you will, that will prevent this from becoming a, a well, worse situation? Well, to talk to the prevention side of this a little bit because we, we build satellites. Uh, now all satellites are required to have the ability to deorbit or to be brought down when they're done. For years, satellites, when they ran out of gas, essentially, they, they lingered in an orbit and slowly decayed. And as they came in, they could hit other things and cause this debris. We're now required to have the ability to uh, essentially have enough fuel on the satellite when its life is over to purposely bring it in so that it doesn't stay up as additional junk. On a, se a separate side, the vehicle we're developing with NASA, the, our Dream Chaser program, is intended as a servicing vehicle so that it can go and find satellites that may not be working and don't have that capability to move them out of the way or to get rid of them so that they don't cause that problem. It doesn't stop the junk that's there, but there is work going on to try to understand how to prevent more of it from happening in the future, it, and it's a start.